everybody welcome back to the channel uh we'll do a reaction video on this uh video by mr nightmare uh been watching this stuff for a long time and um uh, wanted to watch this one because it was trucker related true three disturbing true trucker horror stories uh at some point in the video i'm going to kind of pause kind of put my little opinion here and there but um and uh, maybe at the end of the each story, I might put a little bit of, more of an input or or my opinion on the matter. Um, but yeah, this is something new I'm kind of doing. I don't know all too well on this. Um, OB, I'm using OBS for this and all that. I don't know how to quite use it correctly. So if this kind of sounds weird or whatever, I'm sorry. But that being said, uh, go subscribe to his channel. Um, let's get the show on the road, so. Also, one more thing. Uh, if you see some weird editing, it's because there's ads. That's why I hate about this, so. Yeah. Let's get, let's get the show going. Story number one by Roy. Okay. I've been a trucker for close to 15 years now. This happened to me in 2017. Ooh. I was driving an overnight haul through the Mojave Desert in California, headed for a destination in Arizona. I think I was delivering appliances, I don't really remember. It was pitch black darkness in every direction. The headlights on my semi were really dim at the time, and I had been putting off getting them fixed forever. Usually I couldn't tell the difference, but since there were basically no other cars on the road, it was much more obvious. I remember having to strain my eyes every few minutes to make out the road in the distance. That could have been a horror story in of itself. I was debating pulling over for a couple hours and waiting for sunrise, but I didn't want to waste my time. I desperately needed the money at the time, so I kept driving even though it wasn't fully safe. I figured since it was basically a straight line it would be okay. I think it was about an hour before sunrise when I saw something approaching fast in the distance. Worried about hitting an animal, I slammed on the brakes. As my truck screeched to a stop, I realized what was in front of me. A car with its hazards on. The weird thing was that it was in the exact middle of the road, like literally on the double yellow. What was even weirder was that the passenger door was wide open. My truck- Yeah, no. Um, if there's a car in the middle of the road, uh, I'm not stopping for shit. Um... Now, unless it's some some type of emergency or whatnot, but uh, typically when there's a road, I mean a road, if you're on the road and there's a car in the middle of the road or blocking the lane or there's people or there's like a roadblock, you do not stop absolutely for no reason, all right? Uh, you can call the police once you kind of pass by. I mean, you slow down, go around, you keep on going. Uh, you don't stop, okay, unless it's the police. But even then, there's people pretending to be cops. But um, you, this is 2017. Phone's a thing. Dash cam's a thing. I'm calling the cops. Hey, man, there's this car just in the middle of the road. Here's the license plate number, blah, blah, blah. If there is any. If there isn't, that's who you know. That's some, um, mm, you don't stop, you don't get out type of scenario. Um, yeah, and have your doors locked. You do not have, you should never have your doors open or unlocked at all, at all. Even when you're driving. Because a situation like that kind of slow down somebody come up to your truck and try to open that door if that door is unlocked game over game over but then again if you have a gun with you or whatever to protect yourself hey more power i mean it's just your property right if you own the truck if it's not well there's there's different factors for that but do not ever stop and then this dude for 15 years supposedly he's been driving he does the rookie mistake of stopping no big no no so let's see what happens stops maybe a foot before hitting it not to toot my own horn but I'm a pretty fearless guy and I know my way around a bar fight because of this I wasn't really scared when I saw the car I was more curious than anything I thought maybe someone needed a jump or something so I reversed the semi and pulled over I thought about throwing some flares down but decided against it since I hadn't seen a single other car on the road besides this one I got out of my one more thing, he said that he was in a hurry to go deliver or whatever, and you, but you got time for this. Again, not my place, not my job. If I'm trying to make that money, 
and that load needs to be delivered, I'm gonna go and do that. I'm not the police, I am not Scooby Doo or Mystery Inc. trying to figure out whatever. I'm, mm -mm. But yeah, let's see how this goes. I truck and made my way over to the car. It was a warm, still night. I remember thinking how strange it was that there was almost no wind. It was also really quiet that night. The faint click of the hazards was the only sound in what felt like the entire desert. I got a little closer to the car. I vividly remember that it was a new looking red Ford Fusion. I approached the car a little cautiously. Like I said, the passenger door was wide open. I walked around the car and stopped in my tracks. It was completely empty. I made sure of it too, checking the back seat and anywhere someone might be laying down. There was literally no one inside. All of a sudden, I was much less sure about the situation. I was expecting someone to need help of some sort, maybe even someone who took a nap in a really dumb spot. I certainly wasn't expecting this though. The car was literally empty. I cast a few glances over my shoulder, feeling a lot more uneasy now. I kept whipping my head around, looking in every direction. I felt like someone was going to charge me or something. The problem was, it was so dark that I couldn't see that far in front of me, except for what was lit up by my truck's headlights. It was eerie. I waited a while longer, thinking about getting back in my truck and forgetting about this whole thing. Someone was out there. Somewhere. Against my better judgment, I decided to keep investigating. I looked inside the car, but everything seemed completely normal. The key was even in the ignition. Although the engine was turned off. I got... Um, here's the thing. 2017 Ford Fusion. Uh, those cars don't have a key ignition. It's that push start, if I'm not mistaken. Um, unless I'm wrong, I'm mistaken, but I swear it's push button. I, I swear. That's just, that's, that, for me, this is a little red flag. That don't make sense, but whatever it is, um, whatever. Back out of the car and made my way over to the trunk. Might as well have a look, I figured. I went to open it, but it wouldn't budge. Locked. I grabbed the key out of the ignition and unlocked the trunk. Still, though, the thing wouldn't budge. It was jammed from the inside somehow. I opened the back door and tried getting at the trunk through the back seat. To my surprise, it actually opened. There were three squished garbage bags back there, oh, along no. with a rope that was tying the trunk closed. I remember glancing one more time over my shoulder before reaching for them. That's a dead the body. Was clear. <laughs> they must have been three within five inches from one uh -huh. of the bags when the loudest gunshot I've ever heard rang out into the night. I slammed my head on the roof of the car in nope. shock. Hall I but think. I threw the keys on the front seat and got out of the car as fast as I could. As I was climbing into my semi, I heard a grungy voice yelling in the distance. He yelled hey a bunch of times, and his voice seemed to be quickly approaching. I scrambled into the semi and turned it on. I threw it in gear as fast as I could. I remember cursing a bunch of times as the engine initially stalled, and that's when I saw it. As my truck began pulling out, I saw a person standing at the trunk of the car. It was a short, husky guy with red hair. He was wearing overalls and shin-high boots. In his left hand, he was holding a small shovel. In his right, though, was an old-looking hunting rifle. We locked eyes for a few seconds as my truck began to drive past him. He didn't move. I remember him not looking crazy or anything. He had this worried look on his face. As I passed him, he dropped his shovel and started waving his hands. He yelled wait a few times, but I wasn't staying there another second. As I drove away, I watched in the rearview mirror as he ran after my truck for a few seconds before sprinting back to his car. It was clear he wanted me to stop, but there was absolutely no way I was going to do that. I stepped on it, pushing the semi much faster than I should have. I drove for like five minutes and started to think I was in the clear. But then, I saw headlights fast approaching behind me. <laughs> oh no. I remember feeling more scared than I had ever felt in my entire life. I called the police and told them what happened. Okay, okay. Bro at the very beginning said he, you know, he was big and bad. Now, he's scared. Okay. And now, now you just call the police? Okay. Uh, yeah. 
big no no one you don't ever turn off your truck for no reason and th like in this situation don't turn off your truck i don't know why you had your truck off um for one or two reasons me personally if it's cold outside i'm gonna have the truck warm if it's vice versa vice versa right and also this is what happens when you want to play scooby-doo So, guy's now chasing you. You're on the phone with the police and everything. And again, this is something that you wouldn't do. Dash cams are for a reason and phones are another too. You don't... Mm -mm. Big no-no. So, let's see what happens. To the best of my ability. That's when the car was basically right on my tail. It started honking like crazy at me. I honestly didn't know what to do, so I just kept driving, praying to God he wouldn't try and ram me. <laughs> Break tickle. After like 15 minutes of this, he cut in front of me and hit his brakes, oh. forcing me to slow down. I was just about to crash into him when finally some flashing police lights appeared ahead. The Ford veered off to the right and sped into the desert, disappearing from sight. I pulled over and waited for the officer to show up. I frantically told him what had happened, but the useless cop decided to get a report from me rather than chase the guy down. I was so pissed about that. I told the guy like twice that he could probably catch up to him if he left now. The cop told me not to worry and that they'd do a thorough search as soon as backup arrived. He sent me on my way and said they'd call me if they ever had an update for me. They never did. None of my buddies have a story this crazy, and I've told it more times than I can count. I know what you're probably thinking. That guy was definitely burying bodies. That doesn't really explain why he had such a small shovel, or why he tried to follow me. The bags in his trunk were also too small for that, although some of my buddies think he might have done some dismembering. Mm. For my own sanity, I like to think that he was burying some other kind of animal. Maybe putting a diseased dog out of its misery, or some dangerous snakes. I really have no idea. Either way, I've never been totally comfortable driving through deserts late at night after this experience. You're going to have a skinwalker come out of nowhere. Nah, man, look. So, that story, again, don't ever stop for no, n nothing like that. You just keep on going, mind your own business, and go. Uh, and have your doors locked. Keep your truck running. I, I prefer to waste my diesel and pay an extra couple of dollars on diesel than my life and also me personally if a guy for some odd reason if i was in his shoes guy was behind me brake check his ass if not if what he like he said if he got in front of me and started brake checking me hey look my life is in danger you got a gun i do too if it was me but I got a bigger, I got a bigger vehicle. I'm eighty thousand pounds plus. You know, I'm gonna just pit maneuver you, and you go flip off somewhere, and I just stop until that cop comes, because apparently you see him coming, um, and got a whole dash cam, maybe record my phone if I was that smart, and you know, let 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 it go from there, but. That's not the right way to do things. You kind of back off, let him get away. But in this scenario, he's going to try to make you stop. So you don't stop for anything. So brake checking would be the more logical sense. But also, if you had your phone or dash cam, again, you would take a picture of the license plate number. So even if you took off and the cop showed up, you, got, you gave him a license plate number. And that way, the cop can do what the cop needs to do. Um, at that point, you don't have to worry about anything other than you just had the scared life out of you i don't know um uh, big no-no so again if you're 15 years of driving and that's the rookiest mistake you do is you stop so yeah maybe the story isn't true whether it is or not but the logic or not the logic but the actual moral of the story is kind of relatable you don't do that and I, again a lot of people if i look at the comments a lot of people are going to be agreeing you don't ever stop in that sense um again maybe the the story isn't true but the plot is reasonable and again it, it, it does happen like that 
Um, there's times where people just put up fake roadblocks and stuff. And it's not just, just truckers, but people who drive, you know, in cars and everything. But in a car or a pickup truck, you're not as big and heavy as an 18-wheeler. So you don't stop as quick. But also, you can use that truck as a weapon. I'm just saying, that's just how that is. So in something like that, man, hey. My life was in danger, Johnny. I don't, want, I don't know what you want me to do. The guy was armed, you know. But a lot of things to consider. Uh, there's a right way of doing things, and there isn't. But me, just me be me, I would have done that. But eh, again, I wouldn't have stopped. So <laughs> let's continue this. Also, let's just be prepared for ad. So if you see a weird edit, that's more likely what it was. Juan Ramirez. All right. I'm sure you've seen some of the more modern videos online where truckers will document their daily routines and provide tips for each other. Or maybe you haven't. But being as I'm on the younger side in this industry, every time I open TikTok or YouTube shorts, that's all I see. I won't get into it, but I had to drop out of a pretty prestigious university for some personal reasons and people always tell me I could have been more than a trucker. It's honestly not a bad gig, though. Okay. I've been making deliveries for north of two years. Obviously, the only strenuous part of the job is the long hours. You can never truly gauge how the isolation will affect you without experiencing it firsthand. Yeah. My only advice would be to make peace with whatever demons might be lurking in your Especially subconscious. Especially when you're driving on a long stretch road. Eat at your brain in the lonely hours. Yeah. That's what happened to me, anyway. You fall asleep. This you happened sleep. to me three months after getting employed by my first company. I was basically as new in this trade as one could get. I was driving from southern New Jersey to Lafayette, Indiana. A 12-hour drive. 12 hours driving might not seem that crazy, but factor in the fact that I just completed an 8-hour trip, and that should put things into perspective. I wanted to get deliveries done as quickly as possible, so I opted to drive through the night. I'd get Wait, so let me get this straight. You... You already completed an eight-hour job. Now you're driving more than 12 hours to go finish. Is is that what I'm getting at, right? Correctly? If so, where whatever happened to the logbooks? I thought e-logs was a thing. Or even just logbooks in general. Guy is doing some bootlegging. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't blame y'all. But uh, that don't add up correctly, Chief. But hey. Because you can only drive for a certain amount of time. I think it's like 12 hours, 11 hours at most. And you got to take breaks too, like a 30, an hour break. So, um, yeah. But don't do like this guy did. Don't don't go drive throughout the night if you didn't have any sleep. Something that truck drivers just seem not to get, especially the, the rookies and apparently even the old school guys. Man, hey, man I'd rather sleep, man. Them lows, they can hold. Hell. But there's always those companies that, hey, you got to get that. You got to get that load. Eh, screw you. Find somebody else to do it. You know, I'm not driving all night. I just done did two lows today. Now you want me to do a, a long one? You want it by the morning? Hey, man, that, that ain't happening, chief. <laughs> uh-uh. Sad get to Lafayette just before 3 a.m. Things were going smoothly. There were virtually no other cars on the road, so I was able to push the semi a little faster than normal. About halfway through the drive, I remember reaching down at the center console to chug a Red Bull, but there weren't any. Of course, I had forgotten to restock my truck after completing my previous delivery. <sighs> after slapping my dashboard a few times, I groaned in frustration, knowing I'd have to stop somewhere. There was nothing I hated more than having to make stops during my drives. I might be unique in this, but I always get exponentially more tired when my vehicle is not mobile, even if I'm only stopped for like 20 seconds. After glancing up at the navigation, I figured I had no choice. Interesting. Either fall asleep on the road, or stop and get an energy drink. In my brain, those options were pretty much equivalent. Reluctantly, I pulled into the first service stop I saw. I had literally no clue where I was. Probably somewhere in Ohio at this point. Too late, I realized you this just said you were checking your navigation. It was what looked like okay. an abandoned gas station and a repurposed convenience store. 
I'm not sure if there's any better way to describe it. Either way, it looks like there was another quick stop store not far up the road, so I figured I'd go there if anything. I parked the semi and made my way over to the first convenience store. To be completely honest, I was expecting one of two things to happen. Either the place would be open, or the door would be locked. You can imagine my surprise then, when the door swung open into a pitch black store. I'm interested. <laughs> I looked around, hoping maybe I'd get lucky and there would be a drink or snack left behind. Just before I was about to turn around, my eyes adjusted to the darkness, and I picked up on a faint glow emanating from the corner of the room. I made my way over to... Okay, so you stopped at a gas station convenience store or whatever, and it, like, it looks closed or abandoned or whatever, and you still walked in, and there's nobody else around? My guy, you must have been really tired, because me... You got me screwed up. I ain't walking to an, a building that there's literally nobody in the middle of nowhere. I, I, I'm just being honest. And if there ain't stuff there, it's because it's abandoned. So, bro was literally sleep deprived. Or he needs sleep. <laughs> okay. And the glow turned out to be coming from a back room of some sort. Curiosity got the better of me, and I opened the door slowly. To my pleasant surprise, there was a plugged-in refrigerator against the wall. Eagerly, I opened the door, but found nothing. Literally nothing. The shelves had literally been removed. Like the whole appliance had been gutted. Mm. As I was shutting the door, Homeless I was 90% certain I heard a clatter from the main room. Oh yeah. Something hitting the floor. I froze for a good 10 Get seconds. Get the hell out of Dodge. Had I imagined it? There was no way. Quietly, I walked back into the main room and looked around. Nothing. Part of me wanted to keep investigating. I didn't have time for this, though. I walked out the entrance door and basically jogged to the other shop. It was open, thank God. Smart guy. I paid for my drink and made it back to my truck. Something about this whole stop felt wrong. I needed to get back on the road as soon as possible. I took one last glance at the abandoned store. And noticed the door was now open. I was 100% positive I had shut it behind me. El it wasn't my job to figure <laughs> out what was going on here though. So I started the engine and merged my semi back onto the highway. The caffeine started kicking in and snapped me out of my tired haze pretty quickly. My mind began to wander and I started thinking about how bizarre that whole thing had actually been. I guess a squad or an abandoned building wasn't the strangest thing in the world but my brain couldn't explain that refrigerator no matter what theory I thought of. Mm. I tried to forget about it and kept driving. It was then that I started noticing weird movements in the curtain behind me. Sweat oh. started dripping down. Hell my no! I watched in the rearview mirror as the curtain seemed to billow and move, even though I didn't have the air on. Nope. I thought the worst. There was someone in my truck. I didn't have any weapons on me or anything. So I discreetly punched in the nearest police station on my phone. The drive there was the most tense and horrifying 20 minutes of my life. I kept imagining that person reaching out to grab me or trying to crash my truck. Finally, I approached the police station. I stopped the semi as close as I possibly could get and basically ran over to the police station. In seconds, my truck was surrounded by police. And after I opened the back, what I saw will stay with me for life. The police pulled out three homeless looking people, two men and one woman. They were wearing rags and were wrapped in nasty looking blankets. One of the men was armed with two switchblades. Cool. All three wow. of them refused to talk, but stared menacingly at me as they were getting cuffed. That's a funny looking truck. I have no truck. idea what they wanted. I don't think I'll ever know. Alright, so let me, before, before everything, that is the most AI thing I ever looked. That, that is a funky looking... Kenworth logo looking deal and then you have a Peterbilt front end like a 377 I'm guessing and then the sleeper of a Freightliner you know Columbia or Century or whatever that's a funny looking truck interesting but funky now what did I say at the very beginning have your doors locked so me my truck two things I can leave the truck running with the ignition key, like the, with the key out. In other words, I can take the key out and the truck be still running, whatever. Uh, if I got to stop somewhere, for instance, like his case, I had to stop and get a drink or food or whatever. That 
key comes with me or if you can't have that same style get your spare key leave the king the ignition and lock your doors and you walk and go get what you gotta get right uh because again this story uh again there's some parts that don't make sense right but the moral of the story is lock your doors if not you're gonna have people luckily okay it's weird how he was like oh i just punched in the nearest police station uh on my phone and got went there one thing how do you how do you not know your own truck because then, again like for instance me my truck my kenworth i have this curtain behind the seats to go to the sleeper portion and i always have them open unless i'm parked somewhere i'll close them but if you went in did that and came back and you seen your curtains all closed up hey man that's a big red flag i ain't stepping one foot in that truck i'll call the cops and wait for the cops to show up um and then some trucks they have the curtain around the front where the windshield and doors are and whatnot um some trucks don't even have a curtain at all but i've heard some people have of some stories that uh there's homeless or even people that not even homeless like just people that go and break in the truck and they just chill in the sleeper area or somewhere in the truck and they wait for an opportunity to like take you hostage or kill you to you know take your truck money or whatever the case is so story kind of weird here and there but the moral the moral of the plot is that it, it does happen and it can happen um so again doors need to be locked don't don't ever and then plus don't stop at a, some weird place again I, that that was something waiting to happen there luckily the guy was still alive so interesting stuff so let's go with story number three hopefully there is not another dang ad pop up more likely it will by kevin my name is kevin I've been a trucker for varying companies for the better part of 15 years now. Oh, another one. Things have become pretty routine at this point. Pick up the goods and materials, verify them for accuracy, and deliver them as instructed. We're not paid by the hour, so efficiency is the most important thing in this line of work. For someone like me, who's been doing this forever, I like to think I can outwork all these young guns that are snapping these jobs up. Okay. This isn't always great, though. Usually I push myself to the absolute limit when it comes to functioning on barely any sleep. Four years ago, I was working for a warehouse based in North Dakota. For anyone who doesn't know, North Dakota is one of the flattest states, which makes trucking a little easier. This also meant that skipping out on a few hours of sleep could mean the difference between employment and getting the sack. It was a chilly Tuesday morning in May. The beginning of the week meant that more loads needed to be shipped which meant more work for me. I wanted to knock it all out in one shot, so I traced my route into Montana accordingly, planning on not stopping even once to sleep. I hit the road a few hours after Big lunch, no -no. expecting to reach my destination very early the next morning. I pushed the semi as much as possible, doing maybe a couple over the speed limit. It was getting late, and I remember rubbing the crust from my eyelids as the clock ticked past midnight. I was having trouble keeping my eyes open, but I only had about an hour left in this drive, so I gritted my teeth and kept going. My buddy Tristan, who was also a trucker, introduced me to smelling salts when I first started out. If you don't know, smelling salts are basically some kind of crystals in a little bottle. One sniff and you're wide awake. You had to be careful though. Too many back-to-back -back uses could be dangerous, or at least that's what Tristan told me. They burn your nose a little bit, but whenever I needed a boost, I'd reach for the smelling salts first. This was one of those times. I took a big whiff and shot my head back, my reflexes taking over. I felt the adrenaline course through my body, and I hoped the feeling would last the rest of the drive. A half hour shot by, and I was really struggling. I felt myself start to doze off, and the blare of my truck drifting into the shoulder jolted me awake. This was getting dangerous, I thought. I had to pull off. I was all alone on the highway, but there was nowhere to pull off. There was just woods on either side of me. I slowed the truck down, searching desperately for somewhere to pull over. 
At this low speed, my headlights pierced through the darkness and I was able to see a lot more. As I looked around, I saw something that confused me. There was a purple dress lying in the middle of the road. What the hell? I thought, rubbing my eyes. Was I hallucinating? I blinked like six times just to make sure I wasn't going crazy. It was real. I approached the dress with my truck and stared at it as I rolled by. In hindsight, this should have been more of a red flag, but I think yeah, I was just too exhausted to process what was going on. About 200 or so yards away, I passed a pair of shoes. Now I was starting to freak out. What the hell was going on? I passed the shoes, praying to God there would be a place to pull off soon. My old man, David, was a super religious guy, so I clutched his old cross and hoped he would come through for me. A little further up the road, I saw a bunch more random clothing, some of which looked like little kids' clothing. This time, I stopped the truck. Oh, the panic started on, to set though. in. Something was very, very wrong. I sat in the driver's seat with the truck at a standstill. I was expecting something to happen, but it never did. So, I did what my instincts told me to do. I stepped out of the truck and went to inspect the clothing. I still remember the feeling of the chilly morning air piercing my skin, which definitely helped my exhaustion. I approached the pile as cautiously as I could. He was indeed kids' clothing. It looked like there were both boy and girl pieces of clothing in the pile. I looked around into the woods, but I couldn't see much of anything in the darkness. I had my head on a swivel, worried that this was some kind of trap. I decided it was not my business to figure out what was going on, so I made my way back to my truck. Just then, I heard a crunch from the left. I whipped around, trying to see what was there. I stood there, waiting to hear another sound. After about 30 seconds, there was another crunch, but this time from the opposite side of the road. Nope. My survival instincts kicked in, and I sprinted Ambush. towards the truck. I jumped into the front seat, but just before I slammed the door, I heard a child's scream ring out. I froze my heart bursting out of my chest. I was caught in a crossroads. I wasn't gonna fight some random people in a pitch black woods, but I couldn't just abandon some helpless kids either. Before I could make a decision, another almost identical child's scream rang out. Without thinking, I turned the truck on and pointed its nose toward the spot in the woods where I heard the noise. My headlights lit up about 30 yards into the woods. There were three or four people, one of whom was holding a massive speaker. They ducked behind a couple trees as my truck lit them up, but I had exposed them for just enough time to make out what they were doing. They hid from the light before I could really make out any distinctive features, but I swear on my old man David's grave, they were holding up a speaker, trying to lure me into the woods with a fake kid screaming. I was just in shock. Yeah. I just sat there, staring at the trees those people had just hid behind. I reached for my phone to call the police, but before I finished dialing, I heard a thump from the body of the truck. Someone had thrown something from the other direction. I was done. I turned back to face the road and slammed on the gas. As I sped off, I could make out a person on the other side of the road. He shouted something I couldn't understand before launching something at the truck that cracked the glass of my passenger side window. I drove the final hour in silence. I was too scared to process what had just happened, but there was no way in hell I was stopping to sleep in those woods. I completed my delivery and then knocked out. I must have slept for 10 hours straight. When I woke up, the first thing I did was call the police, who told me they'd investigate those woods and give me any updates. I then thought about the whole thing and how stupid I was to get out of my truck. I should have just minded my own business. But the thought of some kids being kidnapped or worse was just too much for me to ignore. To this day, I still have no idea what those people were trying to do. I don't know why they didn't just rush me when they had the chance or what they were planning to do to me if I ran out in the woods after the kids screaming. In all my years of being a trucker, nothing has ever come close to being as strange or downright terrifying as this experience. Yeah, here's the problem, Chief. Uh, again, don't ever stop. Uh, so, bro, the dude was Kevin Rosett, right? Kevin? Kevin had at least an hour left of driving, so... He took a hit of those salts, right? And then after 30 minutes, it wore off. So there should be only 30 minutes left of the drive. And apparently, you come across clothes on the, on the road. Me, personally, 
I've seen clothes on the road, but usually it's because, you know, you got people with clothes either with a National Lampoon's vacation style station wagon and all the all the luggage went blowing everywhere. <laughs> but all seriousness, you know, that could probably happen. But if you start noticing like a trail and then bigger and bigger, then that's a red flag itself. Unless there's a big old accident and somehow it just went started flying everywhere, you know. Again, um biggest mistake was stopping and getting out of the truck. You don't do that. Again, you just go slowly, go around, whatever. Because even if you run over the stuff, there might be something there that could poke your tires and then you got a flat now now you're in trouble. So try to go around that stuff because you don't know what's underneath it and don't get out. His instinct came in a little too slow and as soon as he got back in the truck, he heard, you know, what he heard, like what, crunch and then um, kids screaming, whatever that, that would have been like, nope, I'm out of there. And also, if he started taking off, how did he, how did his window break if he already took off? Was there, that, that, if he said he saw four people on one side, that means there were, there was a whole group. That, that is alarming. And then he said that for the final hour, does it mean for the last 30 minutes or, or, or was it an hour extra? Whatever the case is, you didn't have the chance to call the cops because when you went to sleep for 10 hours and then you call the cops with a, do I got this correct? Did he say that his passenger side door window was broken? You're telling me you slept for 10 hours with that open just window, just glass everywhere again doesn't make sense story don't add up correctly there but the bottom line is that has happened uh, a friend of mine not a truck driver but just driving down the road um he was he was out of town in one of those one-way roads right well uh, one lane but it's back and forth like left and right whatever the oncoming traffic just a regular one of those country roads right and something similar happened but it was not closed just only closed it was with toys and stuff and then it got to a point where there was just a bunch of stuff on the road and he was not no scooby-doo person so he just seen it take a couple of pictures and kept on driving reported the police and that's the end of the story uh, since then, he's like, they never called me back for anything. So I can just imagine what kind of a trap that was. And watching this, yeah. So rule number one, do not ever stop. And apparently these two guys, the very first story and the last one, 15 years of driving, yet they haven't learned anything. It's kind of sad. And then the third, the second one, uh, guy was still too green there. Um... Again, lock your doors, don't stop. Have some type of defense with you, a knife, pepper spray, gun, something. Uh, because on these roads, man, you can't take you can't take no risk. So that being said, um hope you liked the video and there's my opinion, my reaction to the to the video. Uh stories are okay in the sense like I can relate, but the stuff don't quite add up right. But it is what it is, right? So go check out Mr. Nightmare. That's his channel right there. Pretty good, you know, horror stories that he has and gives. I've been subscribed to him for like, what, 2015? He started in 2014, so it's been a good while. Um, so go give, check his, you know, his, his channel out if you're into that stuff. Uh, again, I reacted it because it's, it's a horror Horror stories by truckers or whatever. There's plenty more. Now there's some that are like. Some of them that are like supernatural. UFO type style. Now those I can relate big time. But that's a different video for another time. So. With all that being said. Hope you like the video. Go like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. That way I know. Uh, well that way you know that I uploaded. But that way I know that I can make more videos. 
uh, and whatnot. So if you like this kind of thing, let me know. Uh, this is something I'm experimenting. Hopefully it comes out well. If not, well, I'll do the best I can. Um, this is my first time using OBS and then a webcam and whatnot. It's not the best, the best, but it does the job. So that's all I got to say. I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.